Praise the Lord, brethren. Now, what, what we want to talk about today is we're coming to a close in 2019, 2018, rather. And um, it's a lot of bad forecasts for 2018, 2019 coming up. It's a lot of bad forecasts. So what we want to do is kind of talk about it, um, talk about the coming days in 2019, as far as the people of God are concerned, because a lot of people are in despair and, and, and panicking and uh, worried about the financial forecast, worrying about all the troubles and the evil times that's coming up on the world. But uh, it's really not meant for us to be afraid. We're looking in the book of Jeremiah chapter number 30. And verse number 10. And I'm going to read, I'm going to read from that text, Jeremiah chapter number 30, verse number 10. See, one thing about it, the word of God is written to a group of people, a select group of people. And they are responsible for carrying in this word to the word, the world. So we are that group of people. We're the ones that the word of God has been written to. In Jeremiah chapter number 30, verse number 10, it says, Therefore, fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, said the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar. So first of all, the Lord is addressing two select groups. And, and as I often state, and clarify that he talks to Israel and Jacob. And those of us that know uh, the story of how they became uh, a divided nation is, is through King Solomon when he passed away and his sons came into power. And I believe uh, Jeroboam or Rehoboam, they, they divided the kingdom. And uh, 10 tribes end up going in the north and two tribes in the south. And um, that's why the Lord addresses them as Israel and Jacob. Uh, Israel in the north and Judah in the south. So it says, I will save thee from afar. So sometimes we um, think that God is, is far away from us. Like right now, it's a bad forecast for 2019. Uh, some of us probably know that there's a, a, a real bad forecast, and it's already started because we uh, look in the, uh, the news, uh, 60,000 jobs were lost in one day. General Motors, Ford, all of the big uh, auto industry, land off, uh, multitudes of people. Then we have the um, Shop and Save supermarkets are closing. Not only that, they're, they're slated to close Wal, uh, Walgreens. They're slated to close some more Walmarts. They're slated to close uh, a multiplicity of Lowe's, uh, the, the, the hardware uh, store. It, the, yeah, Kmart is closing. And uh, some Starbucks are closing. So they got a lot of... Uh, of, of commerce places, money places. Then not only that, I believe uh, Wells Fargo is slated to uh, close a lot of their uh, joint uh, ventures where, you know, there's a financial institution. So a lot of these uh, things are happening at the same time. Now, those of you all to know that they study over in the book of Genesis chapter number 15 where Lord uh, was was telling um, Abraham that uh, that your seed was going to uh, go into slavery, go into captivity for 400 years, and after the 400 years, uh, the Lord said that uh, country or that nation that uh, perpetrated all this evil against you, I would judge. So the Lord is getting ready to judge all of those that had part in our oppression. God getting ready to 
judge those nations. And, and this is one of the nations that's going to be judged. So this is why I say we shouldn't get too frantic or get too bent out of shape because of all these things getting ready to happen because it's really not meant for us. This is a prelude to our deliverance. Let me finish reading in Jeremiah chapter number 30, verse 10. It says, Therefore fear thou not, so we cannot be afraid. Fear is one of those things that can cause you to, to fall under judgment. Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, saith the Lord, neither be dismayed, O Israel. So it's letting us know that the people of God, you don't have to be afraid, you don't have to be dismayed, because God's getting ready to judge those that uh, perpetrated and put all this oppression on us. Then it says, For lo, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity, and Jacob shall return and shall be in rest. So we are from the lineage of Jacob. We're from the tribe of Judah, which is one of the most powerful tribes. Those of us that came over on the slave ships and endured all the harsh treatment, um, we are noted to be one of the strongest tribes. And as a matter of fact, this is the tribe that Christ came through. He came through this uh, uh, tribe. And the Bible states the fact that the scepter should not depart from Judah. So, uh, we are from a royal lineage. That's why over in the book of, of Peter, it tells us that we are a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation, called out to show forth the praise of him that called you out of darkness into marvelous light. All right, then it says, uh, verse, the same verse 10, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. Now, a lot of people want to um, deviate from the fact that we're in captivity, you know, because they have become complacent. Some have good jobs. Some have good, a good living over here. Some living in a big house, you know. The, you know how the slaves, back in the slave days, they, uh, they had... The various ones that was able to be close to the master, uh, as they call them, <laughs> and they would be in the, in the big house and get royal treatment, get and be over the the rest of the slaves. You know, a lot a lot of folk they glory in being over you, and they don't want you to come up. They want you to stay down. So those are the ones that probably don't believe they're in captivity because they right there uh, working hand in hand with the oppressors. But the Bible says, I will save thee from afar and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return and shall be in rest. So we are getting ready to go into a restful state as far as our troubles and our trials and our pain and our suffering. We're getting ready to be uh, relieved from that. And, you know, uh, and be quiet. And none shall make him afraid. So this is why I say it's not for us to be afraid because of these bad forecasts that's being pronounced over this land because God is getting ready to bring us out. It tells us that uh, when you see all these things happening, lift up your head because what? Your redemption draws nigh. So, so we're getting ready to be redeemed. All right. Verse number 11. Somebody, one of y'all read verse number 11 for me. It says, For I am with thee. Uh -huh. uh. Now listen at that. It says, For I am with thee. Sometimes it don't seem like the Lord is with us when we're going through all our pain and suffering and trial. I know I'll be feeling alone sometimes, you know, sometimes I feel like, Lord, what's going on? You know, um, why come this? Why come that? And sometimes people that are not in the will and the way of the Lord look like they fare better than the ones that are suffering with the Lord. Yep. 
And David, I believe he made the statement in the book of Psalms that he said, my foot almost slipped when I seen the prosperity of the wicked. You know, he he, he almost uh, say, "Look, uh, this ain't this ain't working." Uh, you going ahead and getting ahead like the dope dealer? He riding around in Bentley, and, and you on the bus. You know, so something ain't right. You know, he living out there in in uh, what's one of the best places? Living out there in in in, in Ladue and and what's the other one? Town and country. Living out there in town and country somewhere. You know, a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar house, one point two million dollar house, and you written written in a one bedroom studio, and uh, you looking at them, say, I don't know if it's worth it for me to be trying to serve the Lord. You know, maybe I ought to get some connections and find out where he's getting his money from. But we can't do that and say, For I am with thee; He is with us. And regardless of what you're going through, what, regardless of your tests and trials and problems, the Lord say, I'm with you, like he was with Joseph. Joseph was so, sold into slavery. Uh, he told his brothers his dream. They got jealous of him and threw him in a pit. And then he ended up being sold to the Ishmaelites and transported down uh, to Egypt. And down there, you know, he had rises and falls. He rise up a minute, fall a minute. Yeah. But in the end, God set him on high. Amen. So this is, our, this is our situation. You know, we had some good days and some rises and some falls. I believe d during the 60s was a, a slight rise for us because they, they had the screw tightened down on us during the days of Dr. Martin Luther King when they was marching and all of our ancestors was marching and everything, uh, they had the screw tightened down on us. You know, they were still trying to uphold the Jim Crow laws against us, uh, driving up, up on us and knocking us down, hitting us in the head. You know, um, uh, you know they still doing it, but these video cameras, you know, everybody got the power of a video camera now you know, these things then, then kind of took the place of, 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 of the, the news media uh -huh. because you can just instantly click. And so you really seeing now what they've been doing all the time. You know, some people are just probably thinking, oh, this, this just happening. No, they've been doing this all the time. You just got a video on your phone where you can catch them. They're being caught now. So, uh, uh, so the Bible says that for I am with thee, saith the Lord, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations, uh, uh, whither I have scattered thee. Notice that word scatter. That means that it was a deliberate act for us to be scattered all over the earth. You know, we are in all four corners of the earth. We have been scattered. You know, uh, a lot of people that came to this country and try to boast in the fact that, oh, y'all ain't the only ones, but no, we, we were scattered. We was brought here. We was kidnapped, and, you know, and brought here. We didn't come here with no suitcase, you know, and with no visa and, you know, standing in line to get all of the um, perks that they give everybody to come to this country and getting money to open up a business and uh, getting all kind of aid from the government. They didn't give us that. Yeah. We worked. And, and afforded everybody else to have those things. So uh, 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 this is why we have to realize who we were and what happened to us and, and cry out about it. You know, if you want to be happy about your punishment and happy about everybody stepping on you, and you know, that's, that's how people that uh, want to tell you to be quiet about it, they want to uh, uh, suffer in silence and not say nothing. But, but it's time for us to lift lift up our voice and let our youngsters know what we've been through because a lot of young people coming up, they don't know what we've been through. Okay, it says, um, I have scattered thee, yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure. So all this pain and suffering and affliction has been placed upon us was because we have been corrected by the Lord. Because those of us that know that we didn't keep the law, statutes, and commandments, 
of the Lord, we didn't hold up the, our end of the covenant that was cut between us and the Lord. And the covenant is a, a very, very important uh, uh, agreement that you enter into. It, it, you know, like when we was kids, we used to say, okay, we're going to be uh, blood brothers. And we'll kind of prick our finger or whatever and stick our finger with a little pen or something. And both of us stick our finger, and then we put our fingers together and say, we blood brothers now. <laughs> you know, that, I don't know if y'all ever did that. But that's what we call ourselves. Okay, we finna be blood brothers. So when you cut a covenant, a lot of times it has, blood has to be shed to cut a covenant. And that's what happened when uh, God and uh, the children of Israel cut that covenant. They took an animal. And they cut that animal in pieces, and they made a figure eight, like a figure eight, and they walked through those pieces in the shape of a figure eight. And then they said, uh, since we have made this covenant, if I break this covenant, let it be done to me what has been done to this animal. So it was very severe for you to break that covenant. And that's why we've had to go through the pain that we've gone through because our forefathers did not keep their end of the agreement. All right, then it says, but I will correct thee in measure. So the Lord has a certain measure that he's going to correct us. And he's, he's, he's watching and, and taking surveillance on how much suffering that's coming up on us. He said, I'm going to correct thee in measure. So sometimes we don't feel like, oh, this is just, you know, you putting more on me. Uh, it's too much pain, too many tests and trials. But the Lord said, I'm going to correct thee in measure. He has it metered out. He has it measured out how much we can bear. Then it says, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. So we ain't going to get away scot-free and, uh, you know, like God ain't going to do nothing to us. Everybody's getting punished in this thing. We just getting ours early. So our punishment is getting ready to end. Now, if you take notice, we've been going through for the last, what, 4,000, more than 2,000 years. Yeah, a good five thousand years that we've been been suffering. Right. Uh, ever since, ever since, if you really notice, ever since Joseph yeah, went down in Egypt, that that was the beginning of our suffering. When Joseph passed away, the the rose of Pharaoh that knew not Joseph, uh -huh. and he was afraid because we was multiplying just like we. Still multiply now. <laughs> we see we, we you know, having them babies now. You know, and, uh, single mamas got seven babies. And yeah. Ain't no father nowhere. But they got afraid of the fact that we was multiplying. So that started the beginning of our suffering. So we've been suffering up and down, up and down all that time. The question was asked: Is Israel a homeborn slave? Because we've been going through all these tests right. and try, you know, every time you look around, they got us handcuffed on the news, hair sticking up all over our head, you know, just all kind, of, all kind of problems going on with us, you know. And then folk, they just want to brand us like that. Oh, that's one of them ends. Them, them, like them triggers, you know, them, they, them triggers is something else, you know. And, and, and we start talking about our own self. We moving away from our own people and moving out in the the, the neighborhoods. I want to make sure I'm moving out of this neighborhood. But guess what? I'm getting ready to backfire on y'all. The ones moving out into them neighborhoods, they don't want y'all out there. They, you know, you moving right next door to Klansmen and stuff, thinking you're getting away and thinking you're doing something. And they, next thing you know is. That's a little bitty cross in your backyard on fire. 
they're sending you a message. They say, How you doing? Like everything's all right. You know, they done snuck and put a cross in your backyard, letting you know. And we don't really, we don't really want you out here. So a lot of us thinking we doing something, going into those neighborhoods, uh, uh, and, and judgment getting ready to fall on them people, and and they want to blame you for it. It's ran cloud over their house and your house is sun shining. They say, oh, no, no, something ain't right about this. You causing this rain to come on me. All right, let's move on a little bit further. It says, and I will correct thee in measure and will not leave thee on together unpunished. For thus says the Lord, thy bruise is incurable and thy wound is grievous. So we just stated the fact that we've been going through all this trouble from, from the time of Joseph all the way up to now. That's why the Bible says thy bruise is incurable. You know, we've been hurt so bad, the words can't heal what we've been through. Words can't really explain a lot of things that didn't happen to us. Just to name a few. Uh, uh, we, done, we, we, we have been sold to the hands of the enemy. Our family's been separated. Uh, uh, we got men incarcerated. In droves, more of our men are, are in prison than it is on the streets. Our women suffer from having to raise families by themselves. Yeah. And uh, our children, uh, they've lost their identity and lost their way. Uh, many times the, the grown-ups are afraid of the young kids, you know, because they're talking real mean and tough and carrying pistols now. So our wound is incurable. Uh, uh, it's grievous. We've been... We've been hurt beyond measure. We, we watched uh, the history and the news, people standing all around and uh, hanging us, lynching us, and they had their families eating barbecue, watching us get hung and watching us be lynched and watching us be buried and castrating us and, and all that. So our, our bruise is incurable. We can't, we can't uh, be healed from that. You know, it, it's too deep. The wound is too deep. And, and you got your whole family out there. What kind of heart is that? To have your little kids out there looking at you all mutilate and kill a man and, and women. They got women hanging with dresses on, and, you know, from, from up on high. And not only that, They've documented their own atrocities. Their atrocities is documented. Yep. They got pictures. They got a, it, it used to be postcards and, and stamps that document what has been done to us. But now they try to snatch it away and hide it. And, you know, but, but it's been documented. God, he made sure that this, this was documented. So now you can't. You can't uh, uh, lie about this. You can't hide this. I know we're in a backward society now. I know everything is, is backwards now, but it, we've been taught everything backwards. So, so we have an incurable bruise, and our wound is very grievous. Verse 13 says, There is no, none to plead thy cause, that thou mayest be bound up. Thou hast no healing medicines. Cause, you can go to the psychiatrist all you want and take all the Prozac you want, take all the Xanax you want, and whatever else they done invented. You see, that's another thing that's really uh, uh, taking us out, too. They're giving you all this medicine. And you full of all this toxic medicine, talking about, well, this going to help you to be able to cope with your pain. But notwithstanding, now your kidneys burnt up. Your liver ain't no more good because you're taking that stuff every day for 30, 40 years, uh, 20 years. Man. You don't hardly get to take it for no 30, 40, or 20 years because you're full of that stuff and, and never purify your system. So the, there's no healing medicine. You can't take no medicine to get out of this. So the, the God is going to have to deliver us. Then it said, verse 14, all thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not. Some of you women, you, you don't have so many men, you don't even know who the daddy is. 
You know, it's, it's, it, all thy lovers have forgotten thee. Now you're going to call in the state. You're trying to make him your daddy. Make him go find this man and make him pay for all these kids out in the head. Well, you don't know who the daddy is your own self. You know, so so you don't, you, 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 they done forgot about you. You, you done uh, um, just fornicated and whored around and, and now, you know, all of them forgot you. Then it say, for I have wounded thee with a wound of an enemy. So we became God's enemy. Yes, we became his enemy. Some of you are his enemy right now because a lot of people saying, well, I don't do church no more. I don't go to church no more. Well, you God's enemy. And that's what he, he got this scriptures for you. Let me read it over. He says, all thy lovers have forgotten thee. They seek thee not, for I have wounded thee with a wound of an enemy. So you his enemy. Tell me I don't do church no more. Ex-pastor and all that kind of stuff. Talking about come out of them churches. But what you going to do with the book of Revelation? God said he got seven of them. He pronounced a sentence on every last one of them. But you talking about you telling everybody to come out of them. Well, Revelation talking about them. He ain't talking about nothing else. He's talking about his churches. The seven candlesticks. And he had one that he was pleased with. And that was the church of Philadelphia. So a lot of you better be careful trying to tell everybody to come out of the church that God set up. The one that Christ bought with his own blood. You have to be careful. The church is something that we had nothing to do with. We didn't set it up, and you can't tear it down. Christ said, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. All right, let me move on a little bit further. And this ain't personal. This is just the word of God. Then he said, uh, for I have wounded thee with the wound of an enemy, with thy chastisement of a cruel one. For the multitude of thine iniquity, because thy sins were increased. So, so people have gotten worse and worse with their sin. For an example, God made male and female, but you all, men, that y'all want to be with men. Women, y'all want to be with women. You, you, you his enemy. You're the enemy of God. And another thing, before I get ready to close, because I'm running out of time, we have to watch that spirit because uh, God is against those that's against him. Uh, when you start uh, doing what God says not to be done, then you fall up under his judgment. So in other words, if you're in that category, you might be one of those ones that this judgment of 2019 is getting ready to fall. It might be getting ready to fall on you if you're on the outside of the will of God. I don't care if you're a Hebrew Israelite or who you are. If you're not uh, doing the word of God and in the will of God, these judgments will fall on you. you you're going to have to uh, endure the punishment again. So you're going to have to be beaten twice. Ain't that something you know, already went through everything and then now you got to turn around and you go stand in line with, with Esau and them. You're getting ready to take it again. You're getting ready to get beat all over again. And it's going to be worse. You're going to miss out on the rain and, and the rain with Christ is never going to end. Amen. So that's why we got to get in the perfect will of, uh, of the Lord. Let me get ready to close here because time is just moving right on. But then it says, because thy sins were increased. 15, why criest thou for thine affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity. So when, when your pain and your suffering get ready to happen, just stop crying about it. Yeah. You didn't want to repent. You didn't want to turn to the Lord. You didn't want to recognize that you was his chosen people. See, that's another thing. You got to know who you are. You don't know who you are. You still talking about I'm a Gentile. That's almost like I got a son talking about you ain't my daddy. If you a Gentile, then you don't belong. You you not one of his chosen ones, and, it, and that's why you need to know who you are. So ain't that right? I, I know what's right. Then it said, um, Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thine iniquity, because thou sins are increased. I have done these things unto thee. 
So since we went up through all this pain and suffering, I don't want to have to continue to go through it for the lack of, of being faithful unto God. I don't want to have to continue to go through pain and suffering. 2019 is the mark of 400 years, and I believe that's the mark of the beginning of the harsh judgment against this country, uh, the United States and, 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 and Britain, and getting ready to go through the fire. And I want to be under the protection of the Lord. All right, I'm getting ready to come in for a landing because uh, we've been talking for a minute. But verse 16 says, Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured, and all thine adversaries, every one of them, shall go into captivity, and they shall spoil thee, uh, shall be a spoil. They that spoil thee shall be a spoil, and all that prey upon thee will I give for a prey. So those of you that don't want to acknowledge who you are, you're going to end up getting paid double. You're going to go through the trouble all over again with your buddies, with Esau, with, with the one that perpetrated the e evil against us. So you got to line up. If you disown the Lord, he's going to disown you. So um, that's what I have today. You think about that. If, if you have a comment, those of you out there, my listeners, leave something in the comment section and I'll get back with you. Shalom.